Evelyn would like to try to make people laugh, and she always liked the company. Her character was to take life in stride and with grace. We always thought of her as our glue for our family. She held us together. A few weeks before Gus was born, we noticed Evelyn having a fever over many weeks. We couldn't find the answer and it kept getting more difficult and Evelyn got sort of clumsier and would fall and scrape her knees more often. We just became more and more concerned. Adam called and said they found a mass on her kidney and I thought, masses can be benign. The doctors told us not to look it up. Don't Google it because it, it'll only make you more nervous. How can you not dive into that research and find the best options? Our whole goal as parents is to help our children live and thrive. Neuroblastoma is a childhood cancer of the nerves. It's the most common childhood cancer of infancy, and we describe infancy under the age of one. 50% of patients diagnosed with neuroblastoma is what we call the high-risk form, which is a very aggressive disease that is often lethal and difficult to cure. Evelyn had what we know to be one of, if not the most aggressive subtype of neuroblastoma, and she came right into that first high-dose chemotherapy. We met with Dr. Mose. The conversations we had, the understanding and the care really changed what we could come to expect from a pediatric oncologist. We went back home. I packed a suitcase and a week later I walked out of the house in Iowa with Evelyn and drove to Philly. So children who are diagnosed with high-risk neuroblastoma get more therapy than any other childhood solid tumor. And they get every modality of, of treatment that exists. We give even lethal doses of chemotherapy and rescue them with their own stem cells. We give them radiation, they go through surgery, and then they go through an immunotherapy and the duration of treatment is exquisitely long. And despite the intensity of all of that, half of these kids suffer a relapse. The news of relapse in March 2023 was very scary, but I think the amount of time that we got after relapse is because we were at CHOP. And that was a good year. She got to do preschool and she got to do dance class and we got to take vacations. And the quality of time we had was much higher quality under Dr. Mose's care than we could have had anywhere else in the world. It was still hard, but it was, it was a gift. We fail so many children. It's just not acceptable that we treat them with such high intensity chemotherapy and radiation and immunotherapy and we only cure half of these kids. We have to really think outside the box now. Our project involves an emerging type of cancer therapy called CAR T-cell therapy. CAR T-cells are a living drug derived from the patient's own blood cells. What scientists have been able to do is leverage T cells and retrain them to recognize a person's specific cancer. And the way that they do that is by delivering a new gene into those T cells, which are basically directions to recognize cancer in that patient's body and then kill that cancer. This is a, a therapy that can be curative. And in pediatric leukemia patients, CAR T cells have been incredibly successful. CHOP is uniquely positioned really for an, a number of reasons. The revolution of CAR T cells for children with leukemia has happened here. 
While CAR T cells have been incredibly successful for patients with blood cancers, they've been less successful for those with pediatric solid tumors like neuroblastoma. Part of the reason is a solid tumor really is a mass of cells, it creates a wall. The challenges that we face for solid tumors are quite different than for leukemias, but we have a lot of hope. I want there to be a cure. I don't want any other family to lose a child. I just want something better from the hardship that she had to endure. Sick kids are uncomfortable. It doesn't feel good to talk about children that have died, but that's my connection to Evelyn. And when I have an opportunity to talk about her and share her, then I know that you know her too. We now have the infrastructure here to do all of the work in our laboratories and get the drug immediately to children. All we're missing is an influx of funding that will allow us to do the work. The patients are waiting.